Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone in watching another Lions Leadership Program. And what is Lions? Lions is leaders in organized networking. And to formally introduce myself to the people that does not know me yet, my name is Herbert McCod. I am the founder and president of Lions. Ladies and gentlemen, the last video that we went through was the arts of MAM, meeting after meeting. Today, we're gonna go over the arts of centering. Centering is the university in our industry. Centering is the house of the distributors. And who goes to the house? Family, right? Aside from your personal life and your real family, in business, you also have family. The uplines, the crosslines, and the downlines you see, those are your family in network marketing. Centering is also the headquarters, and it's also the university where all networkers go to learn, enhance, and improve themselves so they can get ready and prepared for success. Centering is where you get the knowledge because everyone that's successful in network marketing goes to the center. In the center, everyone shares their knowledge and their experiences. They motivate one another. And when you're down and when you're feeling sad and productivity is not going your way, go to the center because that's when you can recharge yourself. Attend training again. Try to attend a lot of events that your center will put up. Centering is also where you could conduct your goal setting meetings, your team days, and so on. There's a lot of activities in centering. Now, centering is not just the office. You could also have your house as a center. As long as you have a place where your group gathers and where you do your presentation, that's what you call a center. You center yourself in a specific location. Hey, it could also be at a restaurant if you guys want. Centering is very important because this is where you gather your team and monitor your group's growth, where your group is heading and what direction. And if there's any adjustments your group needs to make, you guys can all brainstorm together on how you guys can make that adjustment and execute. The importance of centering is to create a positive culture. Clap and cheer if you like what you hear. You're gonna have to support the speaker because if no one claps, it's gonna be a boring and uninteresting event, training, or meeting. So again, in the center, try to create that positive culture. Centering allows you to expose yourself to positive people and successful people with the same goal. It's like what I always say, birds with the same feathers, flocks together. Tell me who your friends and I'll tell you who you are. If you hang around and expose yourself to a lot of drug addicts, more likely you yourself will be a drug addict. If you hang around and expose yourself with gangsters, you yourself definitely might possibly be a gangster. If you hang around with a lot of emo and negative people, you yourself will also be an emotional person and a negative person. But if you hang around at your center with a lot of positive people and a lot of people that made it to success in this business, you yourself have no choice but to become a positive person and a successful person. The power of centering retains your organization because there's socialism. We are human beings. We are built and create to socialize because centering is formed for bonding to create a deeper relationship with your people. So it's important to set some of your time to go to your center, either the main office, the satellite office, or maybe an upline leader's house where you guys gather all the time. Now for most people that's too far away from their center or the main office, then you have no choice but to conduct your own center at your own house. Now the power of house party, this is where the money is at. If you know how to duplicate yourself and know how to teach your organization to conduct their own house parties, this is going to create a massive momentum in your network. To organize a house party, you must first coordinate with your uplines and your upline leaders that you're conducting a house party so that they can support you, so that they can be the speaker or maybe refer a speaker that's in your team. You need at least one table for your products, laptop, and projector. If you have no projector, invest in a whiteboard. Someday, when you are successful and you're earning a lot of money, then you can invest in a projector. Have a speaker to play your videos and music. Have your tools ready. Have the DVDs, your company AVPs. Have a folder that has a lot of information about your company and your opportunity. Have chairs for 10 or more guests. Have some disposable cups, refreshments, and have an attendance form. This attendance form is important so that you know how many came to your event and you know who to follow up. 
and also have some application form. Now here is the house party guidelines. Host must do the introduction and the introduction has to be lively and energetic. You have to tell your story why you joined, introduce the speaker, Possibly, this speaker will be your upline. You have to tee up and edify your speaker. And host must assist the speaker at all times. Now, near the end of the presentation, you would want to know who is interested in the opportunity, who is interested in the products, and who was not interested at all. It's simple. Just ask them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, by the show of hands, who here is interested in this opportunity? And if they raise up their hand, host, you must remember the people who raised their hand. And ask them another question. Who here is interested in the products? Again, host, you must pay attention. Remember the people who raised their hand that is interested in the products. Because you will divide the group into three. The first group. These are the people that's interested in the business. These will go to your upline for their meeting after meeting. The second group, these are the set of people that's interested in the products. Give them more information about the products. This will go to the host. And any products that's sold, of course, it will go to the host. But if one of your team members bring a guest and that's interested in the products, of course, that sale will go to your team member. And the third group, these are the people that is not interested at all. Give them some refreshments like coffee and some snacks and thank them from coming and set them on their way. You wouldn't want to mix your negative people with your positive. So when you have the chance to send these negative people away, send them home as soon as possible. Here are my 7 tips in having a successful house party. Number 1. Be upfront about your intentions. Do tell them. There will be a short presentation on how you are making extra money. And please, don't tell them this is just a dinner party. You have no idea how offensive and insulting that is to people. Number two, over invite. Not everyone who say they will show will show. So the rule of thumb out of 10, two or three might show up. So if you want 10 guests to show up in your house party, then you have to invite at least 50 people. Remember, this business is numbers game. Number three, have applications ready. At the end of the presentation, hand out the application form. It's easy to determine when to send out the application form. When your upline says, who here is interested in the business? That's already a hint to give out the application form. Number four, Give handouts and play company videos. So make sure you have your company brochures and catalogs. A lot of people will want to look at something about the business before the meeting starts. Number five, make it fun. Tie balloons around your mailbox, have some upbeat music going on, make it more of a fun atmosphere than a stuffy presentation. You could have a surprise game where there's some prizes underneath their chair. As long as it's fun, then you're heading towards the right direction. So brainstorm with your uplines and your team members and how you're going to make your house party fun. Number six, have your team commit in contributing something. This is a business. You should not shoulder all of the expenses. If you're in a team and you go to house party, please contribute something. If you want to contribute some snacks or maybe some juice or some fruits or some coffee. So if all your team contributes in bringing something to your house party, then the expenses will be lighter for everybody. Number seven. The power is in the follow up. After your house party, you have to follow up your guests, your team members, and anyone that attend. And if you don't want to conduct your own house party, is a must to bring you and your guests to the office or your upline's house party or events. You can't do this business alone. If we work together and have that synergy as a team, then me and you will be successful together. I hope these tips in conducting a house party helps you out build a center in your area. For the people that's near the headquarters or the satellite office, it's not necessary for you to conduct your own house party. Just bring your people to the office. Now this is the arts of centering. Practice it, master it, you will see massive momentum in your network. And just a little reminder, for the new viewers that's watching this video, please watch the video, Maximizing Lions Leadership Program. My name is Herbert Bacod, saying good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. 
Have a wonderful day. God bless and happy networking.